vibe coding is awesome. Except when you realize that it's not really going to be useful outside of simple, small hobby projects. At least that was the case. But check out what I just did. I just vibe coded a new UI for connecting a bunch of different Git providers into an existing, very, 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 very large repo. I did it in the browser with just a couple prompts and created this pull request, which updated the code of this massive repo pretty much exactly like I would have written by hand, including using our components, our design system, really all of our conventions. Let me show you something else cool. I just got an updated Figma file for our chat UI, and I'm gonna integrate that in right now by clicking this quick copy button. I'm gonna go into design mode and select that portion of the UI I wanna update. I'm just gonna say update this to the latest design and paste the design right there, hit enter. I can of course manually make changes if I wanted to as well, but I prefer to just copy paste from Figma. And the AI is gonna reason through it and apply my updates right here in the browser. Anyone on our team can do this. And then bam, it made the update. I can click through and verify that the new UI works and just reach over here and hit send PR. And here's our pull request in GitHub. I can look at the files changed. And the cool part is I can go in and comment on anything and tag the Buildrio bot and say, move this into a helper function. And I can just add the comments, as many as I want. And the Builder bot will reply and get right to work. Pushing up commits, responding to anything you ask for, just like if you had asked for it in the chat that we were just using. This is all using Fusion, a product we're just launching today to let you vibe code at any scale with your whole team. Let me show you what else could do. Here I've got a totally different site using a different tech stack, different styling and everything. Let's just add a prompt, add a new contact us page and put it in the nav and fire it off. We will always utilize the tech stack, design system and other contents of that unique project. You could also add additional instructions to be more specific about how you want the AI to output new updates as well. Looks like our contact page is built. Let's open it up and here it is. This is using the styling, the icons, the colors, components, design tokens, etc., that are already used throughout this repo. Now, the cool thing is I can go at any time to design mode and get a full Figma-like editor to make any changes I want. Like I can delete phone support. We don't have that. Let's move the community form up to the top. I'm gonna delete the subject line. Maybe I'll grab this section at the bottom and use the layers tab to pull it up, maybe a section or two. I wanna change the gap in between these sections a bit and the padding there and the margin here. Maybe I'll use a centered layout for this as well. Now I can go back to generate mode and type additional instructions like add an FAQ accordion below this. Fortunately, the typos in my messages shouldn't matter. Now I can see my design updates, larger gaps, form at the top. I've got my FAQ accordion, no more subject line. Let's go do some other cool stuff. Over here, I've got a very different application. This is using the Cloudscape design system. It's what AWS uses for their dashboards. In this repo, I'm gonna say, build me a weather dashboard using the open Mateo API. Do a web search to learn how that API works. Fusion is fully agentic, which means it can write code, check that its work is correct, update the code to make sure types pass, lint passes, and it has full access to tools. So it can do web searches, it can run bash commands, it can do whatever is needed by you. All right, AI says we've got our dashboard. Let's check the dashboards list. We see it there, and there we go. Let's collapse this. We've even got forecast charts, UV index, precipitation. Pretty cool, pretty comprehensive dashboard. Let's search for a different city, San Francisco. Cool. Let's do one thing though. Bring the seven day forecast above wind conditions and make it a side scroll with big, large emojis. Let's make this more like the weather reports from the TV news. Look at that, I like it. Daily forecast, side scroll, big emojis, beautiful. Let's look up Los Angeles. And it all updates. Always sunny in LA, right? Cool. Now let's fire off our pull request. And here's my PR in GitHub. I can go to the files changed and see it did a good job figuring out where to add the dashboard route. And it's making great use of the Cloudscape design system, as well as other shared components in the repo already. Scrolling down, there's pretty much not a div in sight. It's components from the design system and from the repo top to bottom. And it makes reusable components when it makes sense as well. Let's show another example. This time I'm using a dashboard built with Material UI. I have no customers tab at all on this repo. So let's add it. This time though, I'm gonna get the details from a ticket. So I'm gonna grab this linear ticket. And I'm just gonna paste it in here and say, do this. Using model context protocol, we can just grab tickets and tell the AI to fix and implement them. In this case, the ticket says to use our internal users API, which using workspaces in Builder, we connected that API repo and the agent can look up the API details from any format we have like a Swagger or OpenAPI JSON, or just Markdown files. You could connect a bunch of other MCP servers to supply context, internal docs and files, et cetera. 
And you can even build and connect your own custom ones. All right, so we got our table. Looks like it's got lots of good information. Now the ticket said it's supposed to be searchable and let us edit users with a modal. Let's try searching. Is anybody named John? All right, we got a few. Now let's go over and see if we can edit. John, your name is now Bob. Update customer. Cool. Let's search for Bob. Bob Doe. And the beautiful part was this was built entirely with internal APIs. It added the full CRUD operations, just like the ticket asks. Now let's do one last thing. Back at the Builder Academy, I've got some new designs for our homepage. I'm supposed to add this new section, which I can see from the Figma design, looks like it's actually supposed to be a carousel. So let's launch the Builder.io plugin and select this new section and the additional carousel slide. Gonna hit the quick copy button. Let's go to design mode. Zoom out a little bit so we can see it better. And I can click on this section and say, add a carousel with these two slides below this. And I can just paste the Figma design. You can grab multiple frames in Figma and paste them as context to say build out a multi-page or multi-step flow. And there we go. We've got a carousel with our two slides. We can click between them. It works. But obviously a lot of design is not just net new things. We want to update existing things. Let's go make some design updates. Let's take some styling of this other card I've got. And let's apply it to this section. So now I've got my new update to design. I'll just click quick copy. Jump into design mode. Select what I want to update and say update this to the latest design and just paste the latest design and submit. Now we have the full context and we can look at the delta and apply the minimum code changes needed to reflect the latest design. There we go. I've got my design updates just like I needed. And of course it should go without saying that everything we generate or update will always be responsive to all screen sizes, just as you'd expect from anything else in your code. And I can fire off another PR. Here's our pull request in GitHub. Let's look at the files changed and let's zoom in on this. And the important part to show here is when I applied that new design, it didn't just blow away and wipe all this out. It only added the minimum styles of needed to match the design, preserving my components, my functionality, etc. Oh yeah, one last really cool thing we can do is use the Builder VS Code extension to launch right into the visual editor. Here I'm doing it inside of Cursor. This is connected to my local development environment. I can jump in design mode, use all the same features you saw there. For example, maybe I want to fix the gaps on all of these. This looks bad. Oh, there we go. That was much better. Let's apply the changes. Let it run for a minute, figuring out the project structure and how to most efficiently apply these updates. There we go. UI looks better. Let's look at the diff. Ba boom. One line of CSS right in the right spot. To give you a sense of how people are using Fusion, let's go back to the Fusion UI itself. See this repository pinning feature to pin your favorite repos to the top? That was built by our product manager. She had an idea. She prototyped it. She sent a PR. It looked great. We merged it. We got a great feature. See this UI up here? This was all built by our product designer. She opened Builder and Fusion, got every detail pixel perfect to what she wanted, and sent the pull request. With this product, we're seeing everyone from designers to product managers to engineers building UIs faster, testing them faster, getting feedback and iterating faster on everything from day-to-day -day web application development to pure net new prototypes to internal tool development. Inside of Builder, when our employees need new internal tools, we often just have them build them themselves or send pull requests for what they need. And the most important part is there's no limit here. This can handle any code base of any size and complexity, any amount of users, and it works within your workflows. Try Fusion out today over at builder.io and let me know what you think. I'd love to see the amazing stuff that you build with this.